Wednesday, October 24th, 2018, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about whether it's safe to keep your gold with the Bank of England. And of course, individuals uh, are not uh, allowed to do that. You can't open an account with the Bank of England and put your gold there. But all the world's major central banks, most of them, keep a lot of gold with the Bank of England. And recently, uh, I've gotten a, a link to a story about uh, the RBA and the Bank of England, RBA being the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia and what's going on over there. And it's very interesting. Uh, this uh, is a message to all central banks uh, who keep gold uh, with the Bank of England. Uh, is it really safe? Uh, of course, probably none of you are going to be uh, listening to my video, but uh, people from different countries, if they uh, are interested in the subject, they could always contact their government or their central bank and ask them. Uh, there's an old saying, uh, the best way to uh, rob a bank is to own one. And uh, you see what I mean when I... Uh, you know, look further into this story. Uh, before that, of course, I'm going to look at uh, the markets. Uh, it's uh, around 8.30 a.m. London. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of talk yesterday at the end of the day, New York trading day, that the PPT or the Exchange Stabilization Fund came in and bought stocks, uh, that stocks will never go down. There's never going to be a correction. I mean, the Dow was down 500 points and it finished uh, down only 126 uh, but uh, one needs to understand that uh, unless, <laughs> you know, the powers that be, the central banks, uh, the bankers, uh, unless they want to uh, destroy the market, close everything down, uh, and not make the money that they do from fluctuations, uh, then uh, the markets will, there will always be bull and bear markets. It's just that, uh, of course, it's a game, and they control the game, and they can do whatever they want. But uh, I think uh, they can only manipulate things uh, when it's going, you know, uh, they need to go with the flow, so to speak. And right now, I think the credit uh, cycle is over, so stocks will correct. Uh, and they know that, and they will pull the plug. Uh, I mean, if, if they didn't uh, pull the plug, they wouldn't make as much money. Look at the fortunes that were made uh, in the 1929 crash. And that's the best kind of uh, fortune for them, uh, I would say, because very few people make a, a lot of money. They don't want uh, you and I, everyone, making too much money or else they lose control. Look at the fortune uh, that uh, the Kennedy family made <laughs> from that crash. And look what what position of power they've been since then. Just uh, So, uh, yes, they are manipulating the markets, uh, but uh, the markets will turn. Uh, exactly when, I don't know. I, I think looking at the charts, technically having... Uh, worked in these markets for over 20 years, I sense that uh, technically it doesn't look very good. Uh, so yesterday, uh, we we had a big rebound, of course. So I'll go over the, the prices this morning, see what's going on, quickly look at the Dow chart, uh, and I'll start out with gold as usual. We've got, uh, and why do I do that? Well, because it's, uh, in my opinion, gold and silver are the best forms of money uh, to hold on to, to safeguard your wealth, especially physical, uh, the physical, uh, you know, version of it, of course. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, you know, some people ask, oh, we can't, uh, you can't lend gold, gold is useless, but you see that you can lend gold when I talk about the Bank of England and what they're doing. So spot gold right now is at 12.3160, up a dollar and a half. Yesterday, uh, we broke through 1236, which was a, a low from December last year, went up to 1240. And then as the powers that be came in to uh, support the stock market, they also came in to chip away at the gold uh, gains. Uh, silver actually held very well and outperformed gold at the end of the day. So yeah, right now we're at 12, just uh, around 1232 or thereabouts. Uh, the range has been 1229.30 to 1234. 
So gold slightly higher this morning. Silver up three cents at 14.75. Uh, the range has been 1469 to 1482. We need to break 15 still in silver. Uh, the Dow this morning is down 106. So I noticed yesterday right after the close, uh, uh, regular hour close in New York, that the futures started going up. But this morning they're down 104. 25,082 down 0.4 of a percent. Uh, the uh, S&P is down 15 or 0.56 of a percent, 2724. The uh, NASDAQ is at uh, 7064, that's Na NASDAQ 100 future, down three quarters of a percent or about 50 points. Uh, we've got uh, the dollar strengthening uh, against the pound. Uh, so the pound is down about a quarter of a percent at 129.52. A euro is down also ab about a quarter against the dollar at 114.40. Uh, and the dollar is uh, unchanged against the yen at 112.50. Uh, yesterday, the dollar was down quite a bit against the yen, especially when the stock market was down a lot. Again, the yen carry trade. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, uh, I've talked many times about that. It, it means that uh, when there's a lot of risk, when people are complacent, they borrow in yen, which means they sell the yen. Uh, and they borrow it very little, and then they put it in higher yielding currencies like the dollar but and, and buy stocks. But when uh, things start getting a bit uh, choppy and volatile, they will uh, buy back the yen, and hence the dollar falls. Uh, crude oil, yes, that can, well, actually the dollar you won, uh, just check here, it's uh, pretty much unchanged, 69.40. Uh, oil continue to come lower. I mean, we're almost, uh, uh, yeah, we're quite a, almost $10 from the highs. I think we are quite near support here. Uh, I think there's some news about the Saudis yesterday and OPEC. Uh, WTI 76.15, uh, pretty much unchanged at the moment. Sorry, that's the Brent 76.15. WTI 66.40, down a quarter of a percent. Uh, what about the bond market? Uh, we, yeah, of course, yesterday with the stock markets being under pressure, uh, people still think of treasuries as, you know, safe haven and yields dropped a bit. Uh, right now we're at 314. Uh, recent high, of course, has been about 326. Italy, uh, what, what's going on in Italy? Well, the yields are 353. They spiked a little bit yesterday, so it's down six today. If you think the Moneco 64 channel adds value to you and you'd like to contribute or help the channel, check the links uh, below in the description. So Bank of England, and uh, why, why did I say, you know, is, is it safe to keep your gold at the Bank of England? Uh, you know, after all, uh, you go to their website, uh, bankofengland.co.uk, uh, and it says, and they have a section, a whole section, how much gold is kept in the Bank of England. Uh, and it says, our gold vaults hold around 400,000 bars of gold worth uh, about 100, over 100 billion uh, pounds. That makes the Bank of England the second largest keeper of gold in the world. Uh, New York Federal Reserve uh, tops the list, they say. So the first question I've got, we should ask, ask and this will help people understand why it's so important to have your own gold to be your own central bank uh, we are always told that uh, by the mainstream economists the keynesians uh, the bankers you know the cnbc's the fox new uh, fox businesses bloomberg's of the world that uh, gold is not money it doesn't matter anymore uh, so why is it that uh, the bank of england still keeps uh, uh, just under $200 billion of gold for other central banks in their vaults. Why does this Federal Reserve keep that gold as well? You'd think that uh, if gold was useless, uh, a barber's relic, well, the gold standard was a barber's relic, but you could argue, you know, even Mil uh, Milton Friedman said gold was going to zero uh, when they uh, closed the gold window in 71. You don't need gold anymore. We can just print the money. Uh, it just goes to show that it's very important. 
And why do they keep that much gold in there? Well, again, for those of you who uh, counter and say, oh, we, there's no, you don't earn any interest with gold. It's useless. You can't earn an income. Well, you can, because that's what the Bank of England and the Fed do. Uh, they uh, lease a lot of their clients' gold uh, to make an income. Um, and that's how you do it. Leasing is just lending. Uh, so to, uh, to all of those of you who say, oh, with the, and the dollar as well, the paper, Federal Reserve notes, that doesn't pay interest unless you lend it, right? So that's another fallacy that we, uh, you know, do, do, do away with here in this video. Uh, the other point I'd like to make, because uh, I was sent this video, of course, uh, by some of uh, my viewers from Australia, and I'll put, a, uh, put it up in the cards and in, on the link uh, below in the description. And it is Adams North, a new gold scandal. England denies Australia access to its gold. I would say it's not England. <laughs> I would say it's the Bank of England. It's very different. But anyway, it doesn't matter. And it's by a, a guy called uh, Martin North. He runs, he has a channel uh, on YouTube and he walk, walk the world. And his uh, company is called Digital Finance Analytics. And he interviews john adams about this gold scandal uh i i it's the video is about 31 minutes longer and i highly recommend you listen to the whole thing but the gist of it is that about four years ago uh the rba uh, reserve bank of australia the central bank of australia uh asked uh, the bank of england uh to do an audit that they wanted to do an audit of their 80 tons of gold that they had with the, uh, in deposit with the Bank of England. Uh, 80 tons, of course, uh, is 80,000 kilos. Uh, and I'll come to that a little later. So, and I think they, uh, and one of the reasons they uh, asked to do the audit, and the other interesting thing that they mentioned is that they had had uh, that gold with the Bank of England for years and they never had an audit. They never had anything written or documented, any contracts with the Bank of England. They just sent the gold there and trusted the Bank of England. So why now did, did they want an audit? Well, because the Germans demanded, uh, you know, the Bundesbank demanded an audit in 2013. In 2011, uh, the Venezuelans actually withdrew or all their physical gold uh, from the Bank of England. Uh, yeah, in one go. And that was just before uh, gold. That was around the time that gold made an all-time high. It went like from 1400 to almost 2000. That's when Venezuela was taking all its physical gold from the Bank of England. And they, they didn't give them that much notice. Just keep that in mind. So the interesting thing about this, uh, what really uh, should uh, raise people's concern, especially central bankers who keep their gold with the Bank of England, is that uh, out of these 80 tons, 11 uh, were supposed to be, are supposed to be used uh, as uh, to lease, right? So that's fine. Bank, you know, if you put your money in the bank, you put 100 pounds or 80 pounds, let's say, and you tell the bank, oh, you can uh, lend 11 pounds. The other 69 should be in your current account. You should be able to take it out anytime you want. So that's what, was ha you know, the uh, RBA was doing with the Bank of England. It was with gold, though. Uh, but the gist of it is that the Bank of England uh, actually <laughs> ran the audit. They dictated the terms of the audit and the Aussies, you know, the RBA officials, uh, they accepted that. I mean, the guys who do uh, this video even say what the Australians should have done, the RBA official, is flown to London with no notice, knocked on the door at Threadneedle Street and say, oh, we want to ha have a look at our gold. Uh, of course, the Bank of England probably wouldn't allow that. And, and that's the scandal that uh, uh, they want to give, uh, be given like a month's or two months notice before uh, the... Uh, Officials from the RBA come and look at their gold to, you know, and and even then they only give them samples of the the bars they have. So I did some calculations here, uh, and the other thing I like to note that people need to know because I think uh, Mr. North and Adams they they made a mistake because uh, they look at uh, ounces 
uh, not as troy ounces uh, and uh, because one normal ounce is, uh, let's see here, is 28.35 grams. But the troy ounce, which is what is used in the gold market, is 31.035 grams. So they mentioned that the, the regular gold bar at the Bank of England is about 15 kilos, but it's not. It's about 12.8 kilos because one troy ounce, as I said, is 31.1035 grams. So Australia has uh, roughly, and the, the bars at the Bank of England, they're not all 12.8 kilos. It varies, but on average, I would say it's around that. The four, you know, that, that brick is 400 ounces, is 12.8 kilos. So Australia would have around 6,250 of those bars at the Bank of England. Uh, and as I said earlier, the Bank of England says they have 400,000 bars. Uh, so that would be, you know, the <laughs> RBA has 1.56% of uh, the gold at the Bank of England, roughly, I would say, uh, at least less than 2%. So why is it so difficult to, uh, you know, uh, allow them to come without notice and show them their bars? Uh, even if you're going to show a sample, they even said that, oh, you need to tell us which uh, serial numbers you want to look at roughly. I mean, it's ridiculous. And they might argue, oh, it's because of costs. But I'm sorry, if you're going to be in the business of keeping, keeping people's money or people's gold, you need be, to be prepared for them, your client to come and check that their money is safe. What, are, what is the Bank of England doing? You know, if, uh, because they probably do have this gold. But why are they making it so difficult for other uh, central banks or their clients to come and look at their gold and make sure it's there? And uh, notice how the audit is done by the Bank of England at their terms. And they're the auditee. That doesn't work in the real world. They should have an independent, uh, uh, the RBA should be able to come with an independent uh, party and do the audit, right? So what do I think they're doing? Well, uh, and you might say, well, the Bank of England is very honest. Uh, they're uh, very well respected. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah. But uh, look at this story from uh, 2017, April. And it says, this is from The Guardian, mainstream. BBC to air recording that implicates Bank of England in LIBOR scandal. Uh, Panorama, which is a program, it's like 60 minutes, kind of, in the UK says it has recording of 2008 call in which Barclays bankers discuss alleged pressure by Bank of England to lower rates. So, yeah, <laughs> they're not like saints at the Bank of England. Uh, and a lot of you know about the LIBOR scandal when uh, banks, uh, international banks in, in London wouldn't lend to each other in dollars. So that rate spiked and that showed that there's no confidence in the banking system. So you had the Bank of England pressuring them to lower that, that rate to keep the system going, right? So keep that in mind. So uh, why would the Bank of England, uh, because Australia, you know, leased. Uh, so if they can't show the 11 tons that they leased, that's fine because it's been leased out. But why not the other 69? Well, if you look at the LBMA, which is the London Bullion Market uh, Association, uh, the, <laughs> the chairman, uh, uh, first of all, the chairman is a guy called Dr. Paul Fisher. Uh, and it says here, after a 10 year academic career, Dr. Paul Fisher was a figure at the Bank of England for 26 years. So we got this guy now at the LBMA, right? Former Bank of England uh, guy. And what does it say about the vaults? Uh, at the LBMA, it says, basically it says that uh, they don't hold any gold at the BMA, LBMA, they don't have vaults. So how do they do it? How do uh, they, <laughs> it says, the, the clear, those clearing managers without their own vault operations, Scotia Bank and UBS utilize their accounts uh, with one of the LBMA custodians or the Bank of England and therefore do not contribute to the statistics to avoid double counting. So why should the Bank of England uh, provide, uh, you know, custodial services to the bullion banks of the LBMA? Well, um, I'll tell you why. So that these uh, bullion banks can come and manipulate and control the price of gold. And, uh, 
what I think the Bank of England's doing. Uh, they are lending a lot more, uh, you know, out or leasing than they tell their clients. And that's why they need to uh, be given a lot of notice so that they can uh, try to get as many bars as possible to do the audits. And that's why when Venezuela asked for all their gold, the gold price went through the roof. Uh, and you might ask, uh, why does it matter? Well, it matters because uh, a, a gold price that's not under control of the Bank of England or the Fed or the BIS shows that there are problems in the banking system. Uh, and uh, you might argue, uh, so the price will never go up. Well, it will, but at their own, at the pace that they want. So uh, that's what's going on at the Bank of England. They might uh, have uh, the gold, uh, and but they've leased it out. They need to buy it back in the in the market. Send it, you know, send the gold back to Switzerland uh, to have it. Uh, uh, melted and put the right numbers on it so they need uh, they need time to do that and that's why they're doing that and uh and if you go back to uh, when gordon brown announced that he was going to sell half the uh, this country's gold reserves uh, or 300 tons uh the rumor is that uh, the bullion banks were under pressure there was a short squeeze and they they you know if they're gonna cover back the gold the, it was gonna drive the price a lot higher uh, so the Bank of England is always concerned that they're going to lose control of the gold market because people are going to want uh, the real thing, and they're highly, you know, they they're highly leveraged. Uh, you know, they they're lending a lot more than they're supposed to. They're probably lending even a lot more than the, they have overall in their vaults, uh, and that's why uh, world central banks that have their gold with the Bank of England. Uh, they need to uh, be very careful. They need to actually demand an independent audit. And if they don't, they're letting, uh, you know, the public and their own countries down. Just the, uh, like the RBA has let uh, the Aussies uh, down. Uh, and there's no two ways about that. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share it. Make sure you subscribe to uh, my channel if you haven't yet. Uh, and uh, you can also follow me on Steemit, DTube, and on Twitter. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.